Greetings. I am Frank D. Smith, Jr., War 4 Councilman for the City of Bedford. I have served you for the past two years and look forward to serving you the next four. Thank you very much for your support. Have a great day. Okay, here we are. Welcome to this evening's uh, candidates debate. Uh, we have members of uh, candidates running for Ward 2 and Ward 6. And uh, today we're really, tonight we're really just gonna focus on making everything fair, giving everybody an opportunity to speak and uh, so that you can get to know them better and make wise choices for uh, the election. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, when, when the uh, candidates speak, we're just gonna have them come on up and s probably stand maybe on a step like right here. And then uh, we'll have a couple minutes. We have some questions that we already have uh, in advance and the uh, candidates will be speaking uh, two minutes a piece on the different questions. And uh, I've got my timer somewhere, it's over there. I'll go get it. Um, but anyway, who am I? You might be asking yourself. Sometimes I ask myself that same question. Uh, my name is Mark Sellards. Uh, I'm with the Bedford Tribune. And uh, so you may not notice it, but I'm a little nervous. And uh, this is the first time I've ever run a debate before. Um, uh. Hello? Oh, yeah. there we go. Okay. My normal gig is I'm a fourth and fifth grade teacher in Cleveland, and so uh, I got that going for me, but uh, hopefully we just can have some fun tonight and uh, get to know everybody better. I'm gonna let, uh, we're gonna have uh, just a minute or two for each candidate to introduce themselves, and we're gonna start going from left to right with uh, Mr. Tony Longino uh, Thomas, and uh, so if you'd like to introduce yourself, Good evening. That's when you say good evening good back. Evening. Good evening. Good evening. My name is Tony Longino Thomas. Uh, I've been a resident of Bedford for the last 24 years. Uh, born and raised in Cleveland. Uh, graduated from John Adams High School, class 85. 56 years old. After graduating from John Adams, I went to the United States Air Force where I proudly served active duty for 10 years. After proudly serving for 10 years, I joined the reserves and also joined the Solar Police Department. Where I joined, well, excuse me, where I served for uh, 20 years. After 20 years of serving with the city of uh, Solon at the police department, their first African American police officer, I went to uh, Beachwood, where I'm presently a part time resource officer. I'm also a member of the Bedford Civil Service Member, excuse me, commission, where I've been doing that for the last five years. Hope to have your support, and as I always say, God is good. Hello everyone, thanks for coming here. I think it's really a, a nice turnout. A lot of friendly faces, familiar faces. And Can you hear me? Oh, okay. How's yeah, that? Close. Are you <laughs> um, I'm a uh, lifetime resident of Ward 2. I was born and raised here. Uh, graduated from Bedford High School, uh, Bedford Bearcat, and uh, when we get through the questions, I think you'll know me better. And also, uh, I just want to thank uh, Mark Sellers for putting this on. I think it's really a wonderful event. And thanks again for being here. Okay, so I'll introduce the next uh, candidate is Kathy Chach. And uh, she's running for office in or two. Good evening, everyone, and thank you for coming tonight. Um, thank you, Mr. Mark, for uh, hosting this event tonight. Everyone here is interested in what we have to say, and that means you guys are doing your homework on us, so thank you. That means you guys care. Um, I am a lifelong Bedford resident on Archer Road. Um, and I am running for council representative for Ward 2, and I believe I am the first female to be a candidate for Ward 2 
in 40, probably 40 years. So thank you. So, uh, so when we scheduled this, we were worried about the cold. I had no idea we'd be competing with all this uh, work out there, which uh, it looks nice when they're done, but uh, there's probably no way we could get them to stop right now. Okay, next candidate, uh, Patrick Barnum. Thank you, Mark. And actually, that sound is the sound of progress. Got some notes here. My name is Patrick Barham. I grew up in Missouri. I take pride in being plain spoken like my fellow Missourian, President Harry Truman. My wife Lisa and I moved to Bedford with our infant foster, now adopted son, Jaden, in the spring of 2020. I'm the son of a former teacher and a veteran who owned a small, a small business. I've been working as a political consultant the last 20 years. As I've gotten to know my neighbors They've shared their concerns with the current councilman. Their concerns continue to go unheard. These stories continue to bother me because I keep hearing them. It is a council member's job to be accessible to the people they serve. I will always be available to you, voters, the, the great folks of Ward 2. Because I'm not originally from here, I bring a fresh perspective to the council. Because it is a long overdue fact that Ward 2 needs true representation. We need a council member from this ward who is not opposed to helping move this city forward and who does not take pride in voting no, no towards progress. I am humbled to have received the support and the from the following people i'm proud of their endorsements the black women's political action committee cleveland american middle eastern organization the bedford walton hills democratic party the cuyahoga county democratic party the afl cio the united auto workers former state senator kenny yuko and are soon to be with the lines redrawn darnell brewer state rep darnell and I'm most humbled to have received the endorsement yesterday of Vice Mayor and Ward 3 Councilman Vic Fluharty. Thank you. And last but not least, uh, we've got a, another candidate for Ward 6. This is Harry Carter. Good evening, everybody. And it's pretty impossible to I'll come up after you after this. That's pretty good. I said my name is Harry Carter. Um, I've lived here for about 25 years, uh, currently in Ward 6 for the past 13 years. Um, I graduated from Bedford, class of 2000. I ran for city council four years ago, and I'm attempting to do it one more time to see the change in the war that needs to happen. So thank you. Thanks, Mark. Okay. So we have developed, we have four questions, four questions for uh, each candidate. We're going to uh, ask one at a time, and each candidate will have up to two minutes to uh, answer the question. And so these were uh, given beforehand, and the uh, candidates knew they were coming. And so um, the first question is this. They'll have two minutes. What are some of the unique skills or expertise that you bring to the office of council person? Let me reread uh, re that again. And uh, what are some of the unique skills or expertise that you bring to the office of council person? And to make it fair, we're going to start with a different person each time. So, starting with Mr. Genutis. Thank you very much. <clears throat> First, um, in this group, I have the knowledge and experience. The council. I listen, investigate, and research. <laughs> in my professional career in the pharmaceutical industry, 
I was responsible to write procedures and policies for compliance to the federal regulations. Very acutely aware of rightful legislation, in fact, I'm the only council member who has authored legislation. I am unique in not merely following along with the group in voting. We have often cast the dissenting vote. <clears throat> Give voice to the opinions that may not be in the majority. I bring other people's concerns Sorry. Are you sure? Okay. Sorry about that. Okay. Um, again, reading the question. Uh, what are some of the unique skills or expertise that you bring to the office of council person? Catherine Chich. As a lifelong War II resident and a Bedford Bearcat alumni, class of 86, I feel that my professional background and participation in the Bedford community would be a great fit for representing the residents of Ward 2. Professionally, I have over 25 years of experience in corporate accounting finance in the manufacturing industry. For the past 20 years, I have been, empl been employed by one of Ohio's oldest companies and who are also the world's largest leaders in their industry. Personally, I have, the, personally, the skills I can bring to that bring to the office are that of being a community leader who is authentic, modern thinking, emotionally mature, relationship builder, I'm curious, approachable, and organized. I am not a career politician, nor am I seeking any career advancements. I am running as I am, and that resonates with the community. I am a central school kid who grew up in a great community, and I hope we can rebuild, <clears throat> rebuild that to a strong, community for the future of Bedford. A fact, a fact is that Bedford is aging out and I believe that it's going to be my generation that will need to step in and take the lead on making the changes for Bedford future. It will not happen overnight and no one person can do it all. It will take a collective mindset of everyone working together. To motivate that mind mindset, Council will need new, energetic elected officials who are willing to step up, not afraid to take risks, and have a can-do attitude. I've been, the, I've been an active member of the Bedford Downtown Alliance for the past five years with the most recent role as president. During my term as president, I have repaired and built relationships with the downtown businesses and local organizations. These relationships have grown into successful partnerships for promoting and showcasing the historical downtown district. If elected, I promise to work hard for you, the residents of Bedford. Thank you. Again, what are some of the unique skills or expertise that you bring to the office of council person? Patrick Barham. I am a people person who's not afraid of hard work. In the few short years I've lived here in Bedford, I've made many connections with numerous public officials across Northeast Ohio. And they talk about what a great community Bedford is, but also how it's one step away from really taking off. I not only want Bedford to take off, but I want it to soar. By electing me, I will work with these public officials to help get Bedford there. Some of my skills include management experience, experience with other gov local governments throughout the country. It allows me to have a broad perspective to help govern this city. I know that to bring people together with different viewpoints in order to build consensus is very important. Thank you. And we have, uh, well, we got two more people for this first question. So we got Harry Carter for Ward 6. Okay. 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 Have I 
post-secondary education I received from Cairo Community College, I just remember voting yes on issue five, and from Kent State, along with my management experience with the company I've been with for 24 years, I bring skills that are not present on the council that you see today. Following a multi-line of budgets, answering questions, and following guidelines and rules are second nature to me. Also, I've been volunteering my time with my family at multiple events for the city of Bedford for the past couple of years, and mostly for the Bedford Downtown Alliance, where I volunteered for numerous hours over the course of the past four and a half years, and currently serve as Vice President of the Bedford Downtown Alliance. Thank you. And the last person to, uh, to answer question one, what unique skills or expertise do you have? Longino Tom, there you go. I always say, serve, serve, serve. And people say, what do you mean by that? That's what I do. I started off by serving. My first job, it was 14 years old. I was a bagger at Seymour's on Kansas. That was my first job. From there, I went into the Air Force after graduating from high school. I served, that's what I did. I served. I, I did time over in Saudi Arabia. That's what I do, I serve. I became a police officer, and that's what I did. My background is serving. That's what I like to do. As a resource officer, I always tell, every, I always tell my kids, I'm the watchdog. I'm there. I have their six. People in Bedford, I'll have your six. That's what I do. I serve. I was a trustee with the uh, VFW and Solon. I did that for a few years. Once again, I serve. I lead. I know how to serve. I was a member of the CIT team. That's a critical incident team. I was a member of the CIT team. What that means is I was a negotiator. I know how to talk. But as my track coach right there, Coach Holland always told me, you got two ears for a reason, and that's to listen. I know how to listen. You listen and then you talk. But if you don't listen and hear what's going on, then you're not going to say the right thing. So you have to listen. I know how to listen. I'm going to be transparent. Bedford, I'm transparent. Everybody know that house that's over there with the big uh, TV in the yard? I mean in the driveway with uh, all the brown stuff? That's my house. Stop at there anytime. Guess what? I'm transparent. You can come there. You can listen to me. And guess what? I'm going to be accountable. Because if you're going to be in any position of leadership, you need to be accountable. That means if something happened on your watch, guess what? You got to take accountability for it, and I'm going to be accountable for it. And like I said, accessible. You can come to me. You can come to me at any time, any time. And I know what you have to have after doing this and after running for this. You got to have thick skin. God knows you got to have thick skin. I had thick skin as a police officer, and I, I found out it had to be a little bit thicker here because when you're a police officer with that thick skin, guess what's happening at the end of the day? They go to jail. And last but not least, what you have to have is integrity. And my integrity has been questioned, but I got integrity. Because guess what? Those people drop their kids off every day at that school that I'm working. And they know they're gonna be all fine. Guess what? Because this watch dog got their six. Thank you. Okay, so that's the end of the first round of questioning. And now we're gonna move on to Catherine Chach for the next one. Uh, starting out, in your mind, My main duty is to be the representative for the residents in my ward, to be there to advocate for them as the interface with the local government, to assure the taxpayer's money is protected and spent appropriately. We examine every line item of a $30 million budget and approve expenditures to monitor the workings of the various sectors and departments to assure a proper response to the needs of the citizens and <clears throat> also to be a good example for good government good government that sets a lofty example for the people. That includes fostering connectedness as the basis for community building, seeking equitable solutions. Okay, so we've gone, uh, we're about halfway through, and we've gone through two rounds of questioning with our candidates. We will head on into the third question now. and. Uh, Please uh, be patient. Um, like the light, I don't know how good the lighting is up here for everybody. I apologize for that, but we're doing the best we can. 
Okay. Um, the next question, what are some of the ideas or projects you hope to initiate once you get into office? What are some of the ideas or projects you hope to initiate once you get into office? And it's Patrick Barham's turn first. Yeah, because they're a little backlit. All right. I want to make Taft Park the best community gathering space in Bedford. That includes a community garden for Ward 2, safe playground equipment for the kids, recreational opportunities such as basketball, pickleball, and other recreational programming. All this can be done through grant funding, including security and safety enhancements. It's time for Taft Park to no longer be ignored. As a matter of fact, when I look out my kitchen window, I see Taft Park. You know, we, we all live right near the park. I've got a three-year-old son. It is a real shame I can't take him to play basketball. I've been told that they haven't had they haven't had baseball there for six, eight years. We've got all that ground, and nothing is being done. Something wrong with that. How can we not enjoy Taft Park? That's got to change. Okay, what are some of the ideas or projects you hope to initiate once you get into office? Harry Carter, Ward 6. So some of the ideas that I thought, which seemed to like gain a lot of positivity while I was out campaigning, was to actually hold bi-weekly meetings. I want to know what the ward wants and needs. I would challenge other civic leaders to do the same. There's no part-time to this position like my opponent has stated on social media. While working as a volunteer for the Buffer Downtown Alliance, we have already brought two murals to the city. We're letting you expand to other projects multiple monthly events, and so much more. It's critical that the city needs more involvement. Also, I'd like to go ahead and point out, which somebody asked me to, is we are in desperate need of infrastructure. Taking a look at our sewer systems. I've said it before myself, we have an issue, and a few years ago, they did camera work, and it showed that there was not an issue, but in Ward 6, when it rains heavily in the area, all our basements are flooded. So one of the things, if I get into council, not to kind of like sound like Don Saunders here, is we do have an infrastructure problem that we need to revisit. Thank you. All right, I'm going to save uh, wear on our knees by coming up here. And <laughs> okay, and uh, let's see, I've got this, Mr. Thomas. What are some of the ideas or projects you? Oh, we already did that one. Uh, no, that's it. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'll forgive you this time. <laughs> I was thinking about one of the things we always talk about is businesses, bringing more businesses into the area, a lot of small businesses. And I was thinking about it, What? where do small businesses go? A lot of times they go large or they fail. So what you have, to, what we have to do is we have to go out and recruit these businesses. And what you do is you've got to check with the people, talk to the people, see what they want. What kind of business do you want in this city? How about talking to the other businesses? Because other businesses work off of each other. Just the other day, we uh, we started a, a massage therapist along with a holistic. Always put you holistic, <laughs> holistic. They just opened up. They kind of work together. They knew each other. So what you have to do is you have to go out and recruit these businesses. And I always say. When you talk to somebody and you see they got a business going well in another city, how about you do this? Your business is growing. Come to Bedford. You can grow more. And how about we help promote that business? Every, every month we all get the water bill. We get a water bill with things that are going on. How about we put some promotion for these new businesses and make sure that we go in there and we have to, we have to, we have to patronize those businesses. So you go there and you get these businesses and you get them working. Another thing, dear to my heart, being a police officer. We got to get more boots on the ground. Boots on the ground is what help uh, keep the crime rate down. And you get boots on the ground by going out and getting you get grants. There's money out there. The government has money to give to us for police officers. 
We get grants for our new cars. We get we can get grants for dogs. Go out and get those things because all that money is there. And also get the new whatever is new for the fire department, the new uh, ambulances, the new fire trucks. You get these things for the money is out there. And a lot of times it won't cost us anything. But like I said, we got to get these businesses and we got to make sure they grow and we got to keep them growing. We got to do that and that'll help make the city grow uh, to another level. Thank you. Councilman Janudis, same question. What are some of the ideas or projects you hope to initiate? Thank you very much. Well, I have to say, I want to be able to work on and follow through with so many of the exciting projects already in the works that have taken a very long time to come to fruition. These are projects that will impact the people of Bedford for generations to come. These include the commons expansion and the connectivity to the parks. I'm glad Harry mentioned the infrastructure because <clears throat> I think that I have a novel and interesting idea. I call it Horticulture as Infrastructure. Today, as Harry pointed out, we are facing a very serious problem with stormwater runoff. Our aging infrastructure simply cannot handle the volume of water we are experiencing. And the costs to remedy are astronomical. My friend in Perrysburg, Ohio, was assessed $7,000 for a new stormwater system along with everyone else on his street. That's the cost. We are currently awaiting the EPA's decision. Lakewood was already hit for around 60 million, I think, if I recall correctly hearing. Some years ago, I published an article describing the use of rain gardens to remedy the effects of urban rainwater runoff. I think that the time is right for the city of Bedford to explore installing them. Thank you. Okay, again, for uh, Catherine Chach, what are some of the ideas or projects you hope to initiate once you get into office? As an elective, elected official, I hope to accomplish the goal of reducing the disconnect between City Hall and the residents. It would be beneficial to have more than just a once a year ward meeting for the residents. Quarterly town halls could be established where residents can have open communications with the city departments on topics such as safety, our city services, upcoming construction projects, improvements to our local parks, creating a backyard chicken program for the residents, and notifying residents on the grants that the city is applying for. At these town halls, the wards can also invite council representatives from other communities so they can share their experiences and obstacles that they are also dealing with. An example of the disconnect that I would like to improve is to implement the times of public meetings so they can be adjusted to accommodate the residents during the day. when and they could be accommodate the residents. Most importantly, uh, most recently, there's a 3 p.m. Public residents were invited to attend to voice their opinions on the local development needs, such as uh, the topics such as economic development and community improvement projects. If the residents don't know what's going on, how can a city work for them? Recent, recently, the 2023 Save the Union Save the City was held um, at the end of August at 12.30 p.m. The room was full of officials from communities, department heads, and only a handful of residents. The presentation was a snapshot of Bedford's accomplishments along with information from each department. This presentation is now on the City of Bedford's YouTube channel for the community to watch. It is just shy of an hour. If your council representative has not shared this information with you, I am encouraging everyone now to set some time aside and watch the State of the City on the YouTube channel. Uh, 
Okay, so here we are to our last question. What we have planned is we've got one more question and then we have uh, the potential, if anybody in the audience has some questions they'd like to ask, uh, you could feel free to do that. We did have someone write in on the internet for a question. And so uh, we're gonna, we've got one of those. Oh. That's okay, okay, good. And so uh, the last question, and we'll start with uh, Mr. Carter. Uh, where do you see opportunities for economic development in Bedford? I would hope to uh, jumpstart and ignite the idea of actually having an economic developer that is not part-time, full-time for the city. I mean, the person that we have part-time is a, pretty much a grant writer, which she is good at, and has been said during several council meetings that she is a full-time employee for another city. Superficially, I see a lot of business going into other cities. I wouldn't want any big names in the down, our downtown area. If you ever take a look at the city of Wadsworth, they were very similar to us several years ago. They went ahead and teamed up with a local nonprofit similar to the Bedford Downtown Alliance, and now they are a certified Main Street for the uh, state of Ohio. I encourage you to go ahead and take a look at their development, and I hope that we can go ahead and achieve that here in downtown Bedford. Thank you. Mr. Thomas, same question. Where do you see opportunities for economic development in Bedford? Hey, when I thought about that and I said, oh, how am I gonna answer this question? I said to myself, we have a person in that position and we also have a city manager. The experts at it. They were appointed in these positions and we put them in these positions to take care of that. So we need to let them do their job. They do their job and they come to us as city council people. We look at that and we take it into consideration if we should do that. That's, they are the experts. I'm not an expert. Remember, I'm a cop, but I'm going to be a city council. So we got these people in these positions, Mike and Jennifer, they're doing a great job. And even though some people might not say they're doing a good job, because some people might say because Jennifer is part-time, she's not doing a good job, but she's doing a good job. She's bringing this, this, she's taking care of this city and doing the things she needs. Mike is a great guy. I can say he has a lot of things ahead and he's talking about a lot of things. I've talked, sat down and talked <laughs> with him. So he has a lot of things. I believe in brainstorming too. So like I said, even though I might not be the person that has these ideas, you people out there, all our people, all the people in Ward 6, all the people in Bedford, come to me. We can get some things, you know? And like I said, I do believe in stealing ideas. And when I say steal ideas, you look at other cities and see some of the things they do, steal their ideas. Because I always was told, if it's something good that you can use, steal it. If it's something bad, let them keep it. So that's what we can do. We can make sure we can do that. And back to my other words, I always say, listen, listen, and listen. Because coach, why do we have two ears? Listen, we have one mouth to speak. Thank you. Okay, um, Councilman Janudis, where do you see opportunities for economic development in Bedford? Well, I think everybody sees opportunity where we're looking around here in downtown. But the current renovations and adding of amenities in the downtown area, including enhanced security, along with some of the other exciting projects, should, <clears throat> excuse me, some of, the, some of the there, should make Bedford more attractive to new businesses. We are also making modifications to our zoning, switching retail only to mixed use as an example at Meadowbrook. I think the historic district could be made less restrictive to new businesses. Many businesses have been denied, and I in particular have often voted in dissent of businesses being denied here. But also, we talk about revenue, 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 coming into the city, but what about the economic development advantages directly to residents? I firmly believe the American economy can only be restored from the grassroots. We should be more accommodating to better and more advantageous land uses on our own properties, 
especially ending prohibitions against growing our own food? What is a government that prohibits its own citizens from producing their own sustenance? Okay, um, same question. Where do you see opportunities for economic development in Bedford? Catherine Chase. According to the city's website, under economic development, it says that Bedford works with local, county, state, national, re nation national resources and programs to connect new and existing businesses with tools and incentives to best fit their needs. There is another disconnect between City Hall and the downtown district. There's an obvious lack of attention given to this dis district, downtown district. In my honest opinion, a wonderful opportunity would be for the city of Bedford to team up with Cleveland State University, Department of Urban Affairs, and invite their graduate students to write their theses on the planning and the development of our downtown district. This plan would help create a livable, vibrant, equitable, and sustainable future for our downtown. This would also benefit the city manager's and mayor's vision of connecting downtown with the metro parks. For those who are not aware, the city of Bedford was awarded a Transportation for Livable Communities Initiative planning grant, grant from NOACA to review the connectivity of our Bedford's historic district to Bedford's other assets. This process led by a company called Envision that was hired by NOACA um, includes receiving community feedback on how we move to and from our historic historic district, district to places like the Bedford Reservation, Bedford City Hall, Ellenwood, and the library. But the question still remains, what is the city going to do to draw people to stop, shop, and dine in our downtown? What is the economic office doing at City Hall planning for downtown? Thank you. And then last for this question, what do you, where do you see opportunities for economic development in Bedford? Um, Mr. Barnum. In Ward 2 on the corner of Rockside and Northfield, along with Rockside and Bartlett, as a matter of fact, all along Bartlett Road, we need, we need more than a big box store that's going to pack up and leave in a few years. We need, I'm in agreement that we need small businesses that can have a sustainable plan. We need to do everything we can to help facilitate that. Look at downtown. A lot of great small shops, am I right? We need to support them every way we can. We need to be more welcoming. We really do. And I'm also in agreement, you know, growing gardens is a great thing. My wife, Lisa, she just started growing some small plants. We're hoping to build it up. But we have to do more than grow gardens. We need to grow Bedford's economy. Thank you. Okay. I hear the clapping. I, I think people show up. <laughs> um, anyway, uh, so those were our four questions that we had that were uh, given ahead of time. And uh, we, had, we do have a couple questions uh, from the internet. And uh, so uh, each person, I think we'll give just one minute to uh, respond to this, uh, starting with uh, Mr. Thomas. Uh, one of the questions I'm from, Gino Thomas. oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, La Gino Thomas. Will you forgive me for doing that? Okay. Yes, La Gino <laughs> Thomas, sorry. <sighs> okay. And uh, the, so the question is, what is your motivation for running for council person? As I said before, serve, 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 that's what I do. That's what I love to do. I always tell people I've done so many things in my life when I'm trying to serve and when I'm giving back, and I do it for a completely and totally selfish reason. Why? It makes me feel good. You do things because you're supposed to, and it's, it's time. It was an uh, uh, Olympic runner. Her name was Marilyn Manning Mann from Cleveland, and she talked about her Olympics and how now all these women are making all this money, and they said, are you mad? She said, of course I'm not mad. It wasn't time. It's time. That's my motivation. That's my motivation. Motivation. You got to know when it's time to do something. I forgot to mention that I'm the, uh, married with uh, four kids who are all out the house. 
I'm a retired police officer. I'm working part-time at the schools. I have my summers off. It's time. That's my motivation. That's my motivation. Doing what's right. You don't need to have motivation to do what's right if you just do what's right. And that's what I'm here to do. That's my motivation, and that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do what's right. And serving the people of Bedford is something to do that's right. You know, I think about my mother and my grandmother who lived in a segregated South, and they told me about the issues of wanting to vote and needing to vote and couldn't vote. And think about it now. I can be a city councilman, just like I was the first African-American police officer in the city of Solon. Thank you. Okay, Mr. Denise. Thank you. My motivation. My motivation is to serve, but it comes from my roots here. I grew up <clears throat> in Bedford here, and I live in the same neighborhood I have for my whole life. I had an idyllic childhood. There's nothing that I would have changed about Bedford and where I grew up. Everything about it was really wonderful. I had a wonderful childhood. And being the city council person has given me an opportunity to give back. And that's what I enjoy to do, to spend my life and dedicate my time to serving the community. Okay, Catherine Shakes, also for you. What is your motivation for running? My motivation for running is when you have friends, neighbors, partners in your organization saying, you should run. You should run for council. We need people like you. I also say to myself, why not? I am proud of myself for taking this chance, putting myself out there for the residents and for Ward 2. I'm proud of myself, and I have every right to run. I'm a lifelong Archer Road resident, grew up, rode our, just like Wally, we rode our bikes, we, we grew up here. I'm not going anywhere. I love our community. I believe it's going to be my generation. I turned 55 and I think this is the time. It's gonna be my generation that needs to step in and become the next leaders to build a community like the ones we had growing up. Hey, let's make it better. Thank you. Mr. Barnes, the motivation for running. Thank you. You know, I've worked in politics for many, many years, off and on. When Lisa and I, we got our foster care placement of our now adopted son, Jaden, I thought I was done with politics. I was happy to move on to Archer Road and just focus on him. But over the last few years, I've had many residents who now I consider friends in Ward 2, urging me to run. They voiced their displeasure over not being heard. When somebody is seeking answers, it is our duty to answer them. Whether we give them the news they want to hear or not, they deserve to hear it. We have to focus on this community. It is my plan to listen to each and every one of you so we can help make Bedford the city that I hear it once was. Thank you. Okay, Mr. Carter. So back in 2015, I had an issue that fell on deaf ears when it came to City Hall, and I sat for four years wondering if I should run for City Council because I wanted to be that person who would actually take care of things for people if they needed help. So back in 2019, I decided to run against an incumbent with 20 plus years, and at the end of the day, the vote came down and I had 49% of the vote. And a lot of people say that, that it was hard and I was just so close. But then I think about it and I say to myself, I had 156 people behind me and they believed in me. And coming up to the year of the 2023, I knew I couldn't let those 156 people who voted for me down and I needed to run again. I want to be that person that you could come to and talk about any issues with, even if it's a city, even if it's a personal issue. That's the kind of councilman that I, I want and I want to be. Thank you. Thank you. Um, we did have another question. This one is just particular for uh, Mr. Denudis. Uh, 
and the question was uh, can you um, highlight some of the things that you've done in office it's been 10 years is that correct some of the things that you've done uh, person online wanted to, to know some of those things so well, I wish I were to scratch my head about this one a little bit Okay, I was just wondering. Okay. It's a good question. I think it is a good question. Oh, but there's no need to say Let's just put it this enough. way. I don't have a long list okay. to, to give right now, so you don't have to worry. <laughs> the thing of it is, I think that I um, highlighted what uh, is important for a city council person to do, and I have always done it. And I, I give it my all. I'm very careful. Uh, about the legislation. I'm, uh, I advocate very strongly for the, um, the residents. I reject the notion that I, people uh, are, do, not have a, uh, do not have my ear because <laughs> I'm very accessible and I've always, uh, I've always been responsive to the people in my ward uh, and everyone who has approached me for help. And I've always been a very strong advocate for them. Just, uh, uh, sorry about being sassy, but uh, just actually uh, a serious answer to that is we did put online that if anybody had some questions or were interested in a uh, asking that they could send them to us beforehand. So everybody had an opportunity to do that. As does everybody have an opportunity. Uh, we got two minutes. Uh, we're not going to get out here at eight if we have uh, uh, everyone asking questions. Um, I think we're just going to go straight to closing. So, um, why can't we ask questions? Okay. We're not running away. Okay. Well, I'm nervous fine. about people asking questions. That's why. Um, well, I know, but I just want you all to play nice. That's why. I, okay. So, um, they're here for us. Okay. Great. And I don't know how many, uh, let's limit it. We'll just say there, we'll say five questions all together. Anybody like to ask the first one? Okay. Is it okay for someone? Yeah, I guess it would be okay. Yeah, you're fine. Hi. Uh, this is for Walter and for Patrick. What do you have planned for the residents on High Street whose yard gets flooded when it rains because of Taft Park? Plans for the flooding Thank you for the question. That was brought to my attention multiple times when I decided, as you know, the time I decided to run. Uh, that's a serious issue. That is, her, it seems like every time it sprinkles outside, there's flooding in everyone's backyards. You know, that really hurts people's property values. You know, that's something that we have to definitely take a look at. You know. We're getting all this infrastructure money in that's, well, allegedly available to get. We need to snatch up as much as possible. We've got nearby communities that are just, they're doing such great things. And something as simple as, I shouldn't say simple, but something such as, you know, water runoff, water drainage, we've got to fix that. People take pride in their yards. And when they have this issue in their yards, we have to answer to them. We can't just, you know, say, oh yeah, I hear you, and then ignore it. We have to answer. When you guys have questions, we gotta answer. Even if it's something, you know, the answer is not something you wanna hear. It's our responsibility to tell you and to answer. I will have an open door policy. Thank you. Thank you. 
I, I, it's dark here, but I think I know uh, who's asking this question, and I think I know what the issue is. <clears throat> because this is brought up to me, it's been brought up to me, I pass along the concerns to the responsible people, and what, I, <clears throat> and what I've been asked to do is to have a drainage ditch dug through the park, through the playground, behind the uh, baseball field, and you correct me if I'm mistaken here of what the issue is. The ditch would be to drain the storm water from your own property. The water is not coming from the park. It's coming from your yard and if, this is, if I have the issue right and you're the person who I think you are, <clears throat> and I've asked the city to trench that out, but there's a problem with that because we're not allowed to drain our storm water into our adjoining lots, and that's one of the issues. Furthermore, that drainage ditch is now filling up with silt, so it's not as uh, efficient as it once had been. However, it cuts through a small part of the park. Then it proceeds on to the neighbor's residence on Taft. So by digging the ditch out to drain the backyard, it would go into his yard where he has dibble call cutting his grass. Now, my equitable solution with the city was simply to build a swale there and make a, a rain garden. And I thought that would be a win-win for everyone. But I've not gotten a good response from the city on that. But they, they do not want the, the backyards to drain into the park. The, the flooding is not going the other direction. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you for that, for those answers. Uh, question number two. Do you have a question? Yeah, sure. Okay, sure. Um, what I just wanted to ask uh, a question for all of you, I guess. What do you want Bedford to be in the future? Like, what kind of place do you want it to be? So like five years from now, 10 years from now, what do you see as far as like a plan? And uh, I want to make sure I start with the right person. Uh, we're going to let everybody have an opportunity to answer this, and it would be Wally to start, even though you just spoke. We'll let you. <clears throat> what I'd like to see in Bedford is more of the same, because Bedford's a wonderful place. And <clears throat> We all want lower crime. We all want law and order. We all want um, safe areas and safe, be safe at our, in our homes. But I want more than anything. And what everyone comes up to me and asks me is they would love to have the sense of community that they once experienced in Bedford. And I, that's what I would wish we have a better sense of community and we got to know each other better and we're friendlier to one another and that would be my wish that we all got along and we're more accepting and tolerant of one another uh, what would you like to see Bedford in like five or maybe ten years Uh, first, I'd like to see the city form a committee with the residents and let's plan a five-year, a 10-year, a 15, a 20-year vision of what the residents want to see and let's work together. Five years from now, I'd like to see the police department, our first responders have state-of-the-art equipment. Modern fire trucks, modern ambulances have get everything up to... 20, that would be 2028 20, standards. It's time. Um, also, I'd like to see some sort of a sustainability program. What is, hopefully by then, the city will have some residents form a committee 
that will take it upon themselves to come out and teach the younger families that are moving in how to garden, how to contain a garden. Five years from now, maybe the city will have chickens. If we get a bunch of residents together, let's have a meeting, let's have the conversations, let's talk about it. What's five, five years from now, we don't know what it's gonna look like, but we can, we can dream, we can hope, and we just know that we want things better than we have them today. Thank you, Kat. Five, ten years from now, we need more opportunity here in Bedford. We're losing residents because they don't feel like they have any opportunity. They don't feel like their voice is being heard. That has got to change. And I'm glad you brought up chickens. I think each and every one of us up here are pro-chicken. So at, at the very least, at the very least, why don't we do a pilot program for chickens? 20, 25 licenses. See how well it does for six months. Go from there. But backtracking. I've spoken with so many residents who they feel like they've been ignored by the city for years and years and years and years. That has got to change. Each and every one of you have a voice. Please, use your voice. We will listen. I will listen. That is what I will be paid to do. I will listen. Thank you. Hey, Mr. Carter. Everybody took the chicken pop. I was going to lead off with that, unfortunately. Five to ten years from now, personally, I just wanted to go ahead and see what happens in the next year. I would like to go ahead and think that coming off of Wally over here, more of a civic obligation to go ahead and get back to how people of Bedford used to think it was, at least to go ahead and take pride in their home, to establish relationships with their neighbors, and to actually have lifelong laborers going up with Patrick said. That's where I would like to actually see, not five years from now, 10 years from now, I'd actually like to see that starting next year, tomorrow. Thank you. What I want to see, what I want to see is Bedford. I want to see Bedford become the place where people are jealous that we live here. People want to be in Bedford. When they look at us, our city, they can say, "Man, look at that city. Look at the people's lawns. Look at the buildings. Look at all the. Look at the schools. Look at the infrastructure that we talked about." I want people to look at Bedford and say, "Man, how can I get a place in Bedford?" That's what I want. But it's going to take all of us. It's going to take us, and when it starts, is at the foundation. It starts at the foundation of the school. It starts at the foundation of the council people, like myself. It starts at the foundation of, back to what I said before, listening. Listening, listening, listening. That's where it starts from. Hearing what you want to make us go there, to make people jealous about being members of uh, this community, this Bedford community. That's what I want to see in the next five years. And it's going to take, because think about it. 10 years ago, or 20 or 30 years ago, there was no internet. So we gotta look at a little things like that. We gotta become more modern. And when you come, become more modern, when you get younger people in, you get the younger people in who wanna raise families in Bedford. And when they raise families, they wanna bring back their families. When they have families, they wanna come back and live in Bedford. That's what I wanna see. I wanna see, what it say, Sweet Home Alabama? I want to be Sweet Home Bedford. <laughs> I want everybody to think about Bedford. Okay, <clears throat> so I just said five questions, and uh, unless anybody has a really, really burning question, I think I'm going to close it down just so that we can end uh, right around 8 o'clock. What's that? Burning question. Okay. Uh-oh, okay. Mayor, I'm sorry, I didn't know it was here, and she doesn't know how to drive home by herself, so forget the dog. All right. Uh, I've been here, uh, I lived the first quarter of my life here until I was about 25 on that. Probably been the rest of it here, on here. Uh, I've seen all the council meetings. One of the things I noticed there is how few people know about what's happening. To my interest to find out, because there's major things that have happened that I've seen that I, I think everybody should be aware of, changes that people would have been surprised with afterwards, probably upset with that one. It had, it had gone through. 
how active are you willing to be? How, what, how active are you going to be in reaching out to those people? Not open door, come in, but open door, please come to my house and tell me what's happening. Which I know you won't get a lot of response because when you come knocking on the door, people aren't going to always answer, answer it for you. How willing are you to come out and do that job? Because otherwise, most of the people, I don't know how many people here actually have ever been in a city meeting. I don't know how people have been, were aware that there's a business, there's a, a working meeting beforehand in which the real issues are discussed for which people can be there and listen to. Unfortunately, that change in schedule has made it difficult for most people since it's during regular business hours. The point that was made before as far as how will the, what will the council do to make them basically come out to the people and ask questions versus waiting for us to come in and ask you. My score sheet. Shakes will be the first to answer this question, and if I can rephrase it, it would be, what are you willing to do to go out into the community to make sure that the news of what council is doing is heard? What's that? Is there some? Um, first, we could start off with um, having a communications and marketing department. Have so when you go to the website, you get the pop-up, would you like to get on our newsletter? Have a department that sends weekly newsletters, we, a review of the council meeting. How the, to get the council representatives to the residents to talk to them? That's on us. That's on the elected officials to extend themselves to have, to again, quarterly town halls. Uh, I believe Harry said bi-weekly or bi-monthly meetings. To make themselves more visible. We work, the council works for you, the community. Thank you. <laughs> Mr. Barnes. I'm in full agreement. We need more accessibility. I, when I moved here, I was so surprised we're not getting newsletters. We need to know what's going on. Bottom line, we have to have open communication. When the residents ask us what's going on, we need to tell them. We need to be an open book. That's the bottom line. Thank you. Mr. Carter. Uh, I've stated on my uh, personal website and also on BedfordPost.com that I would like to have a bi-weekly meeting the week after a council meeting is already taking place. So that way we could break it down together and figure out exactly how the ward wants to vote on any issues coming up. Um, I think it's it's needed. Sometimes uh, the, a lot of the dialogue when you watch the council meetings is a lot of people who don't continually watch a council meeting and do, doesn't pick up on what the words are actually being said. It's hard to break down. So that's why we like to have a council meeting I'm sorry, excuse me, a ward meeting the week after a council meeting to break down these issues, talk to the residents, find out the guidance that they want. Thank you. Uh, I'm, I'm just surprised Patrick did say this earlier. He's from Missouri. Show me. <laughs> right? Show me state. I can stand up here and say stuff all day, but you got to show me. And, I, and a lot of the stuff we're talking about is going to have to be those things to show me. How are we gonna get more involved? I'm gonna have to show you. I'm gonna be out there. I'm gonna be on the streets. I was a cop for all those years and I like to be out there and I like to talk to people and I like to see what they wanna hear. I mean, excuse me, see what they want. And once again, I keep saying this over and over and again, listen, listen, listen. Tell me, call me up. There will be an open lines of communication. I will be accessible. You will be able to come to me. There's no, no, no trying to uh, pull the wool over your eyes on that. I will be accessible. Come to me, talk to me, but be ready for to hear those answers sometimes that you're not gonna wanna hear. And like I always tell people, being a cop, you know, dumb stuff, you know, smart stuff. Sometimes you might have to say, eh, that ain't gonna work. But are you ready for that? Are you ready to hear that? Like I said, keeping those lines of communication are open and that's what I'm gonna do. Like I said, I can say something about the internet. We're gonna do these bi-weekly meetings and all those things, all those things like that seem, always seem to fall by the wayside when you start doing those things like that. But knocking on my door and giving me a call and expecting me to get back with you, those things don't get old, because that's what I'll do. Thank you. 
<clears throat> What's being described here is a uh, difficult problem. <clears throat> and I think that uh, what was mentioned also is a significant thing that before the council meetings, um, there's a work session that's open to the public, and a lot of the discussion that goes on happens in the in the uh, uh, work session. So, and, and it's open to the public also. Some of the meetings are kind of boring, and we've heard to date that if you want to know anything in Bedford, that you must come to the council meeting. But you know what? It's the same 12 people at the council meeting every time. God bless them. They're dedicated. Uh, civic-minded people, but it's just difficult for everyone to come to the council meeting. It's also difficult in the hearing of the citizens to step up to the podium, which could be very intimidating for people. And sometimes all people get as an answer is, uh, thank you for your comment, because it's hard to reply to them. But you notice that at that time, uh, you could go to any of the individuals and after the council meeting, people get a better explanation. But the problem with newsletters and whatnot is that it's really not effective communication because nowadays people want a response. Newsletters are just one way, one direction communication, but everyone wants to get a response and that's, that's the beauty of social media today. When our council meetings, and we would have 12 or 20 people, however many people would come, Thank goodness, someone <laughs> with a modern mind, and it was uh, Heather Rhodes, I'd like to say, insisted on having the council meeting streamed. Now, from those 10 people, there's probably 100 people that watch it. So 10 times more people watch that council meeting now, thanks to that one thing. When there's also social media, there are uh, social forums, and they're wonderful. There's there's several of them. Uh, each one has as many as 2,000 voices. That's a lot of people paying attention. That's a lot of answers. And there are uh, city workers that res you know, say there, the people say there's in misinformation and everything. But the thing of it is, our thoughts get re refined, and uh, the social media thus far has been the best way to get information uh, and, and circulate information and connect people together. And so it's happening. People are more connected now than they have been in the recent past. I can tell you that. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so before we uh, close this up, uh, this is a good, that was a good segue into <clears throat> how uh, you can watch this uh, again if you'd like. Um, we will be posting the video sometime tomorrow evening. Uh, to our um, YouTube page, uh, Bedford Tribune, and um, we'll be sending it out, a link out to the subscribers who are on there. Um, I don't know if you'll be able to see, but we got a sign-up sheet over there if you would like to be a subscriber. Uh, it's free. You just uh, put your email address down. Um, you can do that. So I just want to thank everybody before we close up uh, for coming out this evening. Um, it turned out to be a beautiful evening, and the trucks actually did go away eventually and my fingers are just starting to get colder. And so I think it's a good time to wrap up. And uh, we will start the wrapping up with Mr. Barham. Uh, these will be the closing um, comments. Again, thank you, Mark. This has been a great event, and I hope you continue this. Um, I didn't prepare any closing remarks. I just wanna say that the reason, again, the reason why I ran I've decided to run is because I've had so many neighbors just feel like they've been ignored. And that it's not fair. People need to have their voices heard. People need to be listened to. Actions need to be taken. So many people feel like they're walking alone out there. Well, you know what? If I'm elected, I'll stand right beside you and walk with you. You know, I just, I'm amazed. You know, this is such a nice town. But there are people that feel unwelcomed here, and that is not fair. That is not fair. People should feel like this truly is a community. Now, I know everybody that's lived here, they, they grew up here. That's great. But some people who didn't grow up here, they don't, they don't feel welcome. But I know that's, that's not entirely true. We each have to reach out 
and make them feel welcome. I guarantee you, if I'm elected, I, I know I've said this a hundred times, we've all said it, I have an open door policy. You call me, you text me, you knock on my door, email me, I'm going to answer. I will not be hard to find. Okay? I've got so much support from you guys out there, and I'm truly, truly humbled. You know, a lot of you have said, in closing, a lot of you have said you want a new, fresh face. I am here for you. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Carter's closing comment. Um, in closing, I would actually just like to say thank you for everyone coming out, and also thank you to um, all the people, the residents of Ward 6. Um, I've been getting a lot of emails and phone calls. I've been coming to your homes, talking to you, reacquainting myself with you once again. There's still a few more streets out there I haven't hit, and I will be doing that this weekend, but I just want to say thank you very much. Just remember that if you need me, I'll be right there, email, phone call, and I will come to you, no matter what. Thank you. Mr. Regino Thomas. I forgave you for all the other times. Uh, what, first of all, I was raised in a uh, Baptist church, so a lot of times when I get a mic in front of me, I kind of get that feeling. So uh, I know I'm talking fast, and my wife tells me to slow down because when I get that feeling, I start talking a little fast, and I start going. But I always say, but unlike a Baptist minister, there's only, there's only one way. So what I'm saying is, when I come, if, if elected, I'm bringing to you some diversity. I'm telling you a different way. I'm bringing you some diversity to our city because our city is diverse. Our city is diverse. When I also, when I come onto this position, it's like a marriage. And I always tell people, in a marriage, if somebody say they got the perfect marriage, guess what they're telling you? A lie. A lie. They're telling you a lie because there is no perfect marriage. But I always say this, and, and Miss Chrissy probably can say it, say it with me, what I'm about to say. Just like the song say, I had some good days, I had some bad days. But as long as my good days outweigh my, outweigh my bad days, I won't complain. You're going to have some days, you're going to say, why did we put that knucklehead in office? But as long as those good days outweigh those bad days, you can't complain. Thank you. Thank you. You knew this. Closing remarks. Thank you. <clears throat> well... <clears throat> if I have one hope to express, it's that people can also recognize the goodness of things. And that Bedford remains a good place to live, despite the craziness of the modern world. And after all, that's why we're here. And I will continue to live here my entire life. Thank you. And then um, the final comments will come from Catherine Chich. Thank you. Thank you, Mark, and the Bedford Tribune for hosting this event tonight. Thank you to everyone that sat tonight. It's getting cold. We were all cold. Uh, I don't, I, did you also provide the hot dogs and the food? Okay, thank you to whoever donated dinner. Um, thank you to everyone that will be watching this. I don't know if it's live or this would be repeat, but thank you for taking the time in, in doing your research and finding out who we are. Uh, once again, I am Katherine Chach. I am a lifelong Archer Road Ward 2 resident. Central School Kid, Girl Scout Troop 1486. I was also Student Senate President in high school and driving over here I remembered uh, we had Student Government Day and I shadowed Art Dickard. Um, and so here we are, just five years later, um, I am running to be the council representative for the good people, the residents of Ward 2. And I ask that everybody remembers, oh, change for change on November 7th. Thank you. Okay, so on behalf of the Bedford Tribune, myself, the candidates, just want to thank everybody for coming out. Uh, this has been really nice. I really appreciate the turnout, and I hope that you uh, got a chance to get to know the candidates better, and uh, we'll see you uh, election day. All right, thank you very much. <laughs>